All right. Hi, everyone. Today, today's lecture is brought to you by our friends from Elite Intellect 9.0. Yes, we love them so much. Yes, we have Sister Dragon, Mother Dragon, and Elite Talk here with us. And they're going to be delivering a speaking lecture. Um, I'm not really sure what speaking lecture we're going to talk about. I think it has something to do with connectors. But I'll leave it to our esteemed mother to... to introduce whatever topic we're going to have today. And hopefully you guys can learn something from this lecture. Okay? And with that, Mama D, go now! <laughs> Thank you, Sir Manuel! <laughs> okay, guys, Rufa so welcome Rufa back May. to our discussion. Yes, yeah, so welcome back to our discussion here at IELTS Filipino Nurses Group. <laughs> so we are live streaming now. on Facebook. Okay, so we're live streaming now on Facebook, guys. And of course, this evening, we're going to be talking about some of the confusions of the students when it comes to, um, let's say, how to use connectors properly and how to use your, your vocabulary, especially on the examination. Okay, so that will be our discussion for today. Okay, so let me just open my Facebook live, okay, and check the students here, because I think my phone is not Picking up the recent um, status of the live right now. I think there's something wrong with it. Okay. So, guys, yeah, this evening we're going to be talking about the, uh, what do you call this, transitional phrases and connectors that you should be using, not just in speaking, but also some of them will be useful for writing. Okay. So, th this is like a two in one lecture for today. And also, guys, let's talk about vocabulary because some of the students, they are asking, sir, what's the secret to passing the IELTS exam? Okay. And I concur that one of the trade secrets when it comes to the IELTS examination is to work on your vocabulary, okay? So hold on, let me just share this one. Okay, so while I'm sharing our video right now, guys, how's everybody doing? Antaas. <laughs> okay. All right, hold on, guys. <clears throat> All right. Okay, almost done. Okay, there you go. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> hello, Mama D. Nice to see you again. Hello, nice to see you too, my child. Okay. All right, for those of you on Facebook, okay, let me just check those pe the people who are watching on Facebook right now. I don't know if there's something wrong with my phone. I'm not seeing the live. Okay, so let me just, okay, let me just do a shout out from Khartoum, Sudan. <laughs> Shout out. Okay, so shout out to all our admins at IFNG, Sir Jeff, Sir Manuel, Mom Gladys, Mr. M, Mom Michelle, Mom Ethel. Okay, there you go. And of course, shout out to all our students who are watching right now on Facebook. Okay, all right. So let me just, hello, Alfred, present, Mark Salvador. Hello, my love. Okay, so let me just share to you guys my screen as regards our discussion for today. Okay, hold on. Where's my PowerPoint? My PowerPoint is... not here. <laughs> ano ba nangyayari sa yung PowerPoint ka? Okay. Alrighty. Baka mamaya ma-share screen ko yung ano ko, yung yung messenger ko. Makita nyo pa kung ano yung mga kinakausap ko dyan. Charing. Okay guys. So, <clears throat> If it's your first time to join us tonight, I am pleased to meet you. My name is Clint Joseph Tyler, the janitor of Elite Intellect IELTS OET NCLEX and NMC CBT Specialist, PH. <laughs> Bet nyo yon, janitor. Charing. No, I'm the founder, guys, and president of Elite Intellect Night, and I'm also the master lecturer. Okay, I'm an IELTS expert for the past 12 years, also known as your Mama Dragon, Mother Dragon, Mama D, Mommy D, Inang Dragon, di ba? Lahat ng uri ng D, Big D, Small D, okay? Half Filipino, half crazy. And of course, don't forget our official hashtag for tonight. It's hashtag Mama D Cares. Alagang ina, kwentong ina, turong ina, matuto ka, ina ka. <laughs> oh gosh, I miss saying that. <laughs> Lagi ko kasi nakakalimutan. I tend, to, I tend to always forget to say the tagline, okay? So to our Filipino viewers out there and also our... um. Our international viewers out there, welcome to our discussion here at IELTS Filipino Nurses Group. Okay, exciting lectures from you, Mama D. Ah, thank you so much, Fatima. Ano ba? 
<laughs> okay. Hello, Jenny M. Cueto. Hello, my love. Okay, guys. So for those of you on Facebook, please share this to your friends because this is one of the most important techniques that I would want you guys to learn is for you to have uh, for you to utilize connectors, okay, and transitional phrases properly on the exam. Because it is a proven fact guys, that when people know how to utilize uh what do you call this connectors and transitional phrases on the exam, then they tend to get higher grammatical grades. Okay. And apart from that, we're not just going to be working on your grammatical capacity tonight. We're also going to be working towards your vocabulary. So we have a lot in store for you tonight. So stick to the end of the program. More energy, mas happy, di ba? Inerva. Inerva. Yung commercial divina nung araw. Di nyo alam yun. <laughs> okay, guys. So... Before we start a message of great love, a message of this great love first, okay? Let us not become weary in doing good. For all the proper, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest of if we do not give up, okay? This is from the book of Galatians chapter 6, uh, verse 9. You know what? Some of the people, they get tired easily, easily, okay? They get tired of their life. They get tired of their endeavors. They get tired of helping others. I know, I know. I know sometimes we're just human and we get tired, but then again, Again, you have to remember, do not get tired, okay? Or do not become weary of doing good because on the proper time, you will be rewarded with all your good work on earth, okay? So this is from the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Okay, guys. <clears throat> all right. Haha. Or listat na sa isip ko, mother. Ano ba? <laughs> or listat. Magle so fat. <laughs> Ang hirap nun. Who among you has tried that before? Talaga naman, Diyos ko, yung mga fatty stool, ganyan. Pasintabi po sa mga kumakain. <laughs> Hi, gorgeous, the queen of all dragons. Hello, anak. Okay, so let's begin with your discussion for tonight. Let's talk about connectors and transitional phrases first, okay? So this is one of the most important techniques that I could give you on your IELTS speaking, okay? It is a known fact that when people know how to utilize connectors and transitional phrases, then they are bound to get good scores on the exam. But the unfortunate thing is, for some people, <clears throat> it's their first time to hear what transitional phrases are, right? Who among you here? Okay, let's be honest. Who among you did not know that it's important for you to use connectors and traditional phrases on the exam? Say, I do. Come on, say, I do if it's your first time to know this for today. For today's video. <laughs> Wait, let me just check the people on Facebook. Okay, <clears throat> love the energy from Victoria Romanes. Thank you so much, Victoria. There you go, tag your friends, guys, okay? All right, yeah. Actually, a lot of people are not aware that connectors and traditional phrases are quite imperative on your speaking examination for the IELTS. But then again, guys, don't worry. Mama will be teaching you tonight, okay? So why are these important? Let's answer the question first. Why is it imperative for you to learn how to use connectors and traditional phrases? Because first is they help with making your sentences clear and coherent, Apart from that, they also prove your grammatical capacity on the exam, okay? Imagine a sentence without connectors, okay? Imagine a sentence without connectors. I went home, ate my lunch, slept. Look at that. I went home, ate my lunch, slept, right? If you're going to be comparing that with a sentence with a connector, I went home and ate my lunch, then I slept, there you go. So did you see the colossal disparity between a sentence with a connector and a sentence without a connector? Okay, so you must use connectors and traditional phrases on the speaking and writing of your IELTS test. This is true. Okay, especially with your speaking, guys, sometimes we tend not to be aware of the things that we are saying on the exam. Okay, meron bang ganun dito? Yung kapag ka nagsasalita, halimbawa, nagpa-practice kayo ng speaking, you're practicing on your speaking examination, you're not aware of what you're talking about, right? You just open your mouth and then you say random things, okay? And hope for the best. Who among you loves doing that? <laughs> Who among you loves doing that, right? Unfortunately, yes. Sometimes people or students tend to do that on the examination is that you're not aware of the things that you are saying. You're not aware of how it's connecting, um, how your sentences are connecting. You have to remember, guys, this is an English test, okay? This is an English examination, so they will be looking at your capacity, okay? 
And if you have, yes, mouth diarrhea, right? If you have verbal diarrhea on the exam, you're just going to be opening your mouth without even caring if you're connecting it properly or if you are doing it properly or if you are saying it properly. Then, of course, guys, what's the outcome of that? The indicative outcome of that one is you're not going to be getting your target scores, okay? So it's as easy as that. Hello, Jerlyn. Jerlyn Ganibe from Elite Intellect Urdaneta. I'll see you on Monday. I'll be there on Monday and Tuesday. If you're nearby Urdaneta, feel Feel free to visit us there at Elin Intellect Urdaneta. Okay, <clears throat> so connectors, guys. Let's talk about connectors first. As I have mentioned, we have two that we're going to be talking about before the vocabulary, okay? Your connectors and transitional phrases, okay? Sir Joseph, what are connectors, okay? From the word itself, it connects. Ang pangit naman ng connects ko. It connects. Ideas, okay? They serve as bridges to connect two ideas together. Hello, Net Castillo. Okay, imagine. How can I go from Samar to Leyte? Okay? How can I go to Samar, uh, from Samar to Leyte without using a boat? Okay, let's say by land. How will I get there? How will I get from Samar to Leyte? How will I get there? Come on. Come on, guys. I would need What? I would need gasoline? No, I mean the path that I need to go through. From Samar to Leyte, what do I need? Oh, how will I get there? I will need what? A bridge, right? The bridge that connects Samar and Leyte is NLEX. <laughs> is the San Juanico Bridge. Diba? NLEX? Bet nyo yun? N <laughs> Ayun na naman. <laughs> okay, so it's San Juanico Bridge, right? So imagine that. Let's say Samar is your idea one and then Leyte is your idea two. For you to connect Samar and Leyte, which is your idea one and your idea two, you would need a bridge to go in between them. So these are the purposes of your connectors, okay? They are usually seen in the middle of sentences but not in the beginning, okay? Connectors should not be used in the beginning of your sentences, okay? So guys, when the connectors are used in the beginning of sentences, you're, you will result into a dependent, your sentence will result into a dependent clause and you wouldn't want that, okay? You wouldn't want that on the exam. Tandaan, makinig mabuti, listen, 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 sabi nga ni ati, Beyonce, right? On your examination, when you are starting to say something, you are in the beginning of sentences, okay? You should not be starting it with a dependent clause, okay? Let's say, <clears throat> look at this one. And, ano to? S-Lex daw. Summer Late Express. Ay, pwede yan. <laughs> diba? Let's say, and I did it. I mean, look at that. When you begin a sentence with that, and I did it. It doesn't convey a complete thought, right? Connectors are seen in the middle of sentences, never in the binigiging, okay? Never in the beginning, okay? It is grammatically incorrect to use independent clauses in the beginning. It is grammatically incorrect to use dependent pala, okay? That's dependent, not independent, okay? Let me edit that. It is grammatically incorrect to use dependent clauses in the beginning of sentences because they have incomplete thought. Again, that's dependent clause, okay? So, <clears throat> sir, look at this one. Look at this one, mga anak. Look at the correct way of connecting ideas here, okay? Let's take a look. <clears throat> the students studied well for their IELTS examination. Furthermore, they gained specialization with the concept itself, okay? Again, the students studied well for the IELTS examination. Furthermore, they gained specialization with the concept itself. My first idea here is that the students studied well. And then my second idea is they gained specialization. So for me to connect them, I'm going to use furthermore in between them for me to connect idea one and idea two, okay? Look at the incorrect one, okay? Look at the incorrect one. Furthermore, the students studied well for the IELTS examination and they gained specialization with the concept itself. Furthermore, the students studied well for the IELTS examination. I know that it might sound as if it's correct because it's conveying the full meaning. But if you're going to be looking at this one, you're not connecting that with an idea prior to the sentence itself. So guys, okay? 
connectors are never seen in the beginning of sentences. They are in the middle. The, you have to imagine Samar and Leite as an example for that. Okay? So, why is this incorrect? Furthermore, it's used only to connect two ideas and not to begin an idea in the paragraph. It is utilized to introduce a stronger second idea and not to start a new idea. When you are trying to say furthermore, okay, when you're trying to use furthermore, it's not to begin a paragraph. It's not to begin a statement. It is to connect idea one with idea two, and idea two should be stronger than idea one. Don't believe me? Google that later on. How to use furthermore properly, you will know how to use it, okay? All right. <clears throat> So what are the samples of connectors that you may use? If you would want to take a screenshot of this one, take a screenshot, but rest assured, I will be sending a copy of our handout to our, uh, to our uh, admins at IFNG later on, okay? After this discussion, I will be sending a PDF version of our handouts to the admins of IFNG, okay? If you're an elite intellect student, automatically, we will be forwarding that to your group chat. But for the IFNG viewers right here, we are going to be sending it later on to the admins and they will be forwarding this to you. Now, sir, what if it's my first time to join the live classes here at IELTS Filipino Nurses Group? What should I do? It's quite easy. The only thing that you have to do is to like IELTS Filipino Nurses Group. And then after this discussion, send the message to the admins, okay? The admins are ready to help you and then they're going to be adding you to their group chats, okay? So what's the perk of being a part of the group chat of IELTS Filipino Nurses Group? Number one, you are updated with free live classes from review institutions like this one, okay? That's first. Second one is you have the breakout room session practice for IELTS Filipino Nurses Group where students can actually learn they're speaking and practice with other people who are um, preparing for the IELTS exam. And also, guys, okay, and also, guys, um, apart from that, if there are promotions, okay, promotions for the IELTS, the IELTS app, okay, you will get updated. So IELTS, uh, IFNG, guys, is a safe space and a free space for you to learn for your IELTS, uh, IELTS examination, okay? So if you would want to receive the copy of the handout, message the admins of IELTS Filipino Nurses Group later on. Don't forget to like the Facebook page of IELTS Filipino Nurses Group. Thank you so much! Okay. <laughs> When I say wah wah, you say win. Wah wah, win. <laughs> Naguumpisa na naman ako. Ito na naman tayo. Okay. So, what are the sample connectors that you can that you may use on the exam? Okay. So first, you have your fanboys, right? Fanboys. Okay. For and nor but or yet so. Okay. You have your fanboys for. And nor, but, or, yet. So, sabi ni estudyante, mama Google ka naman na mama di. <laughs> okay. So, what else? Also, with this, along with the said, as well as, furthermore, moreover, because, due to, additionally, in addition, next to that, afterwards, after which, and uh, with which and otherwise, okay? The unfortunate thing is sometimes I see, I hear students say, uh, begin their sentences with connectors, like this one. Um, well, I do love a lot of things. Um, I do love a lot of things in my local community. So yes, I am a type of person who, do, who does a lot of things. And then they're going to, and then they're going to be quiet. And then they're going to be asked another question. In addition to that, so it's in the beginning of, the sentence, okay? If you're going to use in addition to that, you should be, it should be in the middle, okay? I do a lot, I do enjoy a lot of things in my local community because I am the type of person who loves adventure. In addition, I also love helping the community because I've worked a lot in the slums of Tondo, Manila, and the life there is just poor and it's very sad. But I've taught myself to see situations with a silver lining. <laughs> Okay, so they should be in the middle of sentences, not in the beginning. Diba? Hello, I'm Catriona May Quinto. Diba? <laughs> Crossbreed ni Catriona at saka ni Rupa May. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, diba? Half Filipino, half Catriona, also half Rufa. Diba? Gutierrez po, no. Rufa may quinto. Diba? <laughs> Imagine mo. 
<laughs> Imagine mo kung ganun yung examiner yun sa exam. Makakapag-focus ka kaya? Ganito magsalita examiner mo. Okay, so hi, good afternoon. My name is Joseph and I will be your examiner for today. Before we begin, could you please tell me your complete name? <laughs> Makapag-focus ka kaya? <laughs> diba? Nagtanong sa examiner, when you were younger, what are the things that you enjoy? <laughs> Baka magaya mo siyang magsalita. ba? Diba? Ikaw naman. Yes. You know, when I was younger, I love going to beautiful places. <laughs> okay. Joseph, calm. Calm down, girl. Calm down. <laughs> Okay, guys. Go, go, go. You know what I always say? Go, go, go. But they say no, no, no. Okay. So yeah, these are the connectors. These are some connectors that you may use on the exam, but there are a lot more, okay? There is a plethora, okay, of connectors that you may utilize on the test, guys, okay? All right. <clears throat> Mama D is Rupa Mena, di ba nga? Magulat ka na lang, Mama D, sabihin niya, grabe na to, todo na to. <laughs> okay. You know what's my favorite line of Miss Rufa making to in a movie? Um, have you watched Buba before? If you're not a Filipino, um, just Google Buba, okay? <laughs> gusto gusto ko linya yun niya yung ano. Ito namang si ate, kung makapagsalita ka naman, akala mo naman para kang hindi si Lion King. <laughs> hindi ba yung ate niya doon? Si ay ay <laughs> Okay. So, transitional phrases, guys. Okay. If... Earlier, connectors are like bridges, right? Connectors are like bridges. Transitional phrases are like the welcome arcs, okay? Yung makikita mo, welcome to Malaybalay. Welcome to Quezon City. Welcome to Kuya Po. Welcome to Talugtog na Baisiha. Yung mga ganyan, no? These are the transitional phrases, okay? Because they welcome you to a new idea. They introduce a new idea. Again, the connectors serve as a bridge whereas the transitional phrase welcomes you or the transitional phrase welcomes you to a new idea. Okay? They are used to introduce a new idea. They can be used to transition from your arguments towards your explanation or your explanation towards your example, body one to body two, body two to body three, body three to conclusion. There you go. Your direct answer to the question, to your explanation, to your example. So transitional phrases are pretty much useful on the test. They are seen in the beginning of paragraphs and they convey a complete thought when said or written. Okay? So again, if the connectors are the bridges, the transitional phrases will welcome you to the idea. Okay? So, sir, what are examples of transitional phrases? Okay, hold on guys. Give me one minute. Let me just, um, let me just uh, get my water. Real quick, mabilis lang. One minute. See, I told you it's not even one minute. Okay, now, transitional phrases are words like I think, okay? And I have written down things that you may use to replace the word I think because some students, they tend to overuse the word I think on the exam. Like, you're asked the question, what do you think about something? And then the student will say, I think. What is your favorite part of the house? I think my favorite part of the house is, what is your favorite food? I think my favorite food is, what do you think about the children who, who reads early? I think that when you tend to use I think so much on the exam, you're just repeating words and that's not a good thing on the IELTS exam, okay? So, what are the words that you may use to replace the word I think? If you want to take a screenshot of this one, take a screenshot, okay? <clears throat> so, first, instead of saying I think, you can say I assume, okay? Presumably, I surmise, it seems to me that, 
the way I see it, based on my belief, okay, it is with my notion, I discern, I gather that, given that situation, I fathom, or even I believe, right? But then again, guys, when words like, let's say, based on my belief, and it is with my notion, do not use them on speaking, okay? They're too formal for speaking. You may use them in writing, but not in speaking. If it's way too formal, like this one, based on my belief, it is with my notion that, diba, ang pangit ang pakinggan, what is your favorite food? Based on my belief, anak ng tipaklong, kaninong favorite food pa nga ba yan? Diba? So yeah, that's one thing, okay? You may replace the word I think with these words, okay? All right, so what else? Another example of a transitional phrase is, When you're trying to say, I agree, okay? I agree. Instead of saying, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree, agree, disagree, appear, disappear, one hop, one port, one port, one hop, disappear, appear. Gusto kong umutot, pero mga ganyan, no? So, instead of saying that on the exam, instead of saying, I agree, I agree, I agree, okay? You can say, I concur with the idea. Okay, when you say I concur, it means that you are coinciding with the idea itself. I concur with the idea. Absolutely. Okay, most definitely. Exactly. That is affirmative. In accordance, I believe with the said. I accord. I coincide. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. Yes, without a doubt. Okay, but guys, please, when you're trying to say these, do not sound too monotonous, okay? Because you're agreeing with something. So do not say, I concur with the idea. Absolutely. Most definitely. Exactly. That is affirmative. In accordance, I believe. I accord. I coincide. Definitely. I mean, you have to have like a pinch of intonation when you're trying to say them on speaking, right? Let's say, <clears throat> do you agree that children should learn how to read early? I couldn't agree more. Mm, diba? I couldn't agree more. Parang commercial, diba? I couldn't agree more in a way that, huwag naman ganun, parang sobrang, sobrang flirty naman nung tone. I couldn't agree more. Yes, without a doubt. <laughs> okay, so you can say that on the exam, right? I concur, absolutely, most definitely, exactly. That is affirmative. In accordance, I believe. I accord. I coincide. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. And yes, without a doubt. Okay, um, sir, if there's I agree, of course there is I disagree. Yep. Okay, so, so how do you say I disagree the other way on the exam? Okay, so instead of saying I disagree, I disagree, I disagree, I disagree, you can say I beg to defer. Okay, be careful with the pronunciation of defer okay it's not defer because some students say i beg to defer on the idea no that's not accurate okay i beg to defer okay defer okay defer again say it with me defer apple bottom jean jeans boots with defer <laughs> Ayan na. may sapi na naman si bakla <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, guys, please. <laughs> you say, I beg to defer, okay? Yeah, you will not forget that anymore, right? Because of that. All right, what else? Instead of saying, I disagree, you can say, I think otherwise. Well, I think otherwise. Okay, when you say, I think otherwise, you are on the opposite side, right? Okay, what else? I can see myself thinking otherwise. <laughs> Pasok ang differ, ha? Sabi ni Anome. <laughs> okay. I can see myself thinking otherwise. Okay, there you go. So you may say that too. Okay, you can also say, well, I take a different view. There you go. I take a different view. I am on the overse side. When you say overse side, you're on the other side of the equation. I am on the overse side of the idea. Okay, contrary-wise... Okay? Conversely and antithetically. However, guys, antithetical or antithetically should only be used on writing, okay? 
with writing, not with speaking, okay? Because antithetically is way too formal for speaking. Sometimes your examiners do not appreciate it when you are too formal for speaking because you are no longer conversational. Again, like last week, what, what have I taught you about the technique? You have to be conversational, okay? <clears throat> so you can use I beg to defer, I think otherwise, I take a different view, contrarywise and conversely for speaking, but all the rest, you only use them for writing, okay? Don't forget, I beg to defer. <laughs> Apple bottom jeans, jeans, boots with defer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sir Joseph, yung tawo mo parang ano, no? Motor. <laughs> Motor na ayaw umandar. <laughs> okay lang. Okay lang beg to defer. Huwag lang may defer. Rensya na pala. <laughs> Tama, Victor. <laughs> Yung tawa, no? Parang motor. <laughs> yung pag tinatadyakan mo yung motor, di ba? <laughs> okay, wait. Let me just calm down. Let me just calm myself because I am getting too crazy again. All right. <clears throat> so what else, guys? When you are trying to say maybe, right? Instead of saying maybe, 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 maybe by Justin Bieber, di ba? instead of saying maybe ka ng maybe, di ba? you can say, well, I am uncertain. Okay? Perhaps, perchance, word has it, legend has it, I dare say, and who is to say that? Sir, how can I use um, who is to say that? Who is to say that means that no one knows exactly. Okay, let's say, do you think that in the past people sh- people prioritized education more? Well, who is to say that they were able to uh, who is to say that they were able to uh, look at their um, education more as compared to the others? Because it means that no one knows exactly if people prioritizes their education, if people prioritize their education before. Okay, that's the meaning. You can also say word has it, okay? Legend has it. Kung sa Tagalog, eh, sabi nga ni Marites. Diba? Sabi nga ni Marites, ni Maritechi, diba? ni Mariana, lahat na may mga marimari sa umpisa. Diba? That's the meaning of word has it and legend has it. In Tagalog, we call it, um, we, we, we say, um, ayon sa haka-haka. That's in Filipino. Diba? Ayon sa haka-haka. Haka-haka e-e. <laughs> Wale. Direct paki-edit out yon, Ha? Please. Thank you. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Okay, because. Because it's, it's one of the words that have been used, abused on the exam. Okay? Instead of instead of trying to say because, 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 too many times. Okay, you can say in a way that, okay, I love spending time with my family in a way that, okay, that sounds better, right? Instead of saying, I love spending time with my family because I love spending time with my family in a way that, okay? In a sense, right? I love helping the community. In a sense, it is a way for me to also give back to the things that I am receiving, right? Uh, in as much as, okay, in as much as, okay, well, there are a lot of, there were a lot of programs that were implemented by the government during the pandemic, in as much as they were able to provide livelihood programs for the people. There you go, right? Okay, what else? To speak more, to put this simply, in other words, as much as anything, there you go, thereupon, whereas, and to say nothing of, okay? Sir, what is your, what are your favorites there? Um, if you are, a, if you are a watcher, okay, of IFNG um, for, for like how many, how many weeks now, what do you think is my, are my, my three favorites here? Okay, I have three favorites. I have three favorites to replace the word because. What do you think are those? You always hear me say it, okay? Yes, okay, that's the first one. In as much as, okay, what else? In a way that, okay, what else? As much as anything, there you go. I tend to say it a lot, right? I tend to say in a way that, in as uh, as much as, and as much as anything, I tend to say those a lot, okay? So guys, yeah, you can do that too. You can choose your three favorites just to replace the word 
because, right? When I was younger, I was a fan of reading. And as much as anything, I tend to enjoy it because I get to explore different types of things. Diba? Ay, ang taray. Diba? Nag-ielts ka lang. Hindi na lang because ang alam mo ngayon. Diba? Alam mo na rin yung in a way that, in as much as, at saka, as much as anything. And most importantly, I beg to defer. <laughs> See? See, my students and even the, the viewers of IFNG, they know. They know the things that I love to say. Okay, that's good. All right, next one. Mm. Some students, they tend to say, for example, a lot. For example, for example, for example, more for example. Instead of saying for example, you may replace it with supposing that, there you go. Supposing that people were... Okay, what else? For instance, from a distance, there you go. A case in point is, if you're saying a particular case, okay? Hello, girly, my love. There you go. Okay, so what else? Um, a case in point is, there you go, you can say that too. Something is exemplar to this. Like, let's say um, the action of the government is exemplar to this. Okay, which means it's something that is quite commendable. It's exemplar, okay? The um the action of the government is exemplar to this. Japan is exemplar to this. There you go. But guys, please utang na loob. Hindi porket merong exemplar to this, e meron ding for exemplar. There's no such word as for exemplar. Okay? There's no such word as for exemplar. Okay? Something is exemplar to this. The country is exemplar to this. The action is exemplar to this. The person is exemplar to this. There you go. Let us say, there you go. Such as when you're trying to enumerate something or a series, imagine all the people. There you go. So imagine if, uh, imagine if many students um, learn how to read at an early age. There will be development and progression with their capacity. There you go. What else? Basing it to, if you're going to be basing it to a research, accounting it to, let's say, a research, an article, or something that you have seen, watched, or read on social media, dating back to if that if your example was something in the past. No? Dating back to the ancient times, a lot of people do not know what a tissue paper is. Yung mga ganyan, no? Okay, so look at that. These are the words that you may utilize to replace, for example. Diba? Ang dami. Okay? Sir, are we going to get a copy of this one? For the sake of the new ones, those who just came in, don't worry. I will be sending it to the admins of IFNG. They are going to be sending it to the group chats. Okay, if you're not a member of the free group chat of IFNG, then of course, please message the admins. Hi, Sir Ching! Sir Ching is watching! Hello, kumusta ka dyan? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Alrighty, so what else, guys? Apart from, for example, okay, some people tend to say, on the other hand, a lot on the exam, right? They tend to say, on the other hand, a lot. Okay, I'm so sorry. There's a little, there's a little girl here who's, ano, who's interrupting me. Oh, you say hello to your brothers and sisters. Come on. Come on. Oh, say hello to your brothers and sisters. Say hello. Say hello. Sabihin mo. Sabihin mo, anti-podal view. Anti-podal view. <laughs> There's a little girl who's um, disturbing me here. That's Kali. Okay? Anak ko yan. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So, what else? Instead, Miss Yamama, I miss you to searching. Ang dami nyo nung ano, ang dami nyo nung nandyan sa US ngayon. Nakakatuwa naman kayo. Mga talaga naman. Diba? Natupad ang pangarap. That's Kali. She's my, she's my daughter. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, instead of saying on the other hand, okay, when you're trying to say on the other hand, you may replace it with on the other foot, on the other leg, charot. <laughs> There's no such thing. <laughs> For our foreign students, when we say charot, it means beautiful, okay? I am charot, okay? You say that. I am charot. There you go. Okay. So, instead of saying on the other hand, you can say alternatively. Alternatively, okay, what else? Contrary-wise, conversely, in contrast, okay, what else? Contrastingly, besides, still and all, 
even so, you can also say even more so. There you go. Although and though. Okay. So instead of saying on the other hand, on the other hand, on the other hand, you may replace them with these words. Alternatively, contrarywise, conversely, in contrast, okay, contrastingly, besides, still and all, even so, even more so, although and though. Okay. Sir, paano naman po yung never the less? Never the less kasi ang ibig sabihin niyan sa Tagalog eh, ano eh, kahit na, di ba? Kahit na, yung mga ganyan. So you can use that too. All right, so look at that. Okay? These are the words that you may replace on the other hand. Do not limit yourselves to basic transitional phrases. Again, do not limit yourselves to basic transitional phrases. On the exam, you may use these. All right? Okay, so what else? Nakita na! Nakita na! <laughs> okay, before we move on to vocabs, guys, okay? It is just my pleasure to announce. Actually, I suggested this, okay? Due to the requests of our beloved viewers here, okay? The Elite Anniversary promo is still extended, okay? Because you guys know that last week, Elite Intellect celebrated our anniversary. So, we will be opening 20 slots for our anniversary promo at Elite Intellect 9. So, if you are interested to learn with Elite Intellect 9, then our anniversary promo is still available for 20 slots. Okay, so sir, what's your anniversary promo at Elite Intellect? Okay, it's quite simple, all right? For unlimited IELTS review, it's 3,500 instead of 7,999. That is more than 4,000 pesos of savings for your unlimited IELTS review. That's also unlimited one-on-one -on -one coaching. Okay, what else? <clears throat> Unlimited NCLEX or CBT review, guys, that's 6,000 only instead of 25,000. Unlimited OET review is 4,000 instead of 9,000 pesos, okay? So, sir, um, what are the inclusions? Well, basically, they are programs designed to help the students prepare better on the IELTS exam. It's unlimited review with no expiration. Even if your IELTS expires, just come back to us and your review will be free. Okay, what else? Free materials, books, and writing compilation. Okay, live and recorded classes for more flexible schedules. What else? 100 hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching and speaking and writing. Okay, 20 hours of assessments with the master lecturer, myself, your mama D. One-on-one -on -one sessions on grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. So, Sir Joseph, I am interested with the anniversary promo of Elite Intellect 9 because of the big savings. What should I do? If you are interested with that one, you may contact us on Facebook, okay? Just type our code for today is anniversary extended. Ay, hindi ang pangit naman nun. Ano lang? Code natin, anniversary. Okay, that's our that's our promo code. Okay, just type anniversary to our Facebook page. Now, if you send a message, you if you would want to send a message, you can see the link of Elite Intellect Nine here on the chat box. Okay, of of Zoom, and if you are on Facebook, it is on the comment section. Okay, it is on the comment section. Mom Genji and Sir Kael Jello Gael, our national manager and our our um tenured coach, has sent the link of Elite Intellect Nine. So it. Type nyo lang po, anniversaya, for you to avail our more than 50% discount for your unlimited review. I'll see you in class very soon, my future elite intellect students. Okay, so moving on, vocabulary. Okay, Ati Genji, may I call on Ati Genji? Um, from Mary Rose, um, the promo will be available until the slots last. Okay? So mga anak, kung gusto nyo pong mag-avail ng promo, mag-message po kayo agad kay Ma'am Tanya because the slots sometimes, they tend to... Uh, the students tend to get it. You may you may reserve if you want to, okay? Pwede kayong magpa-reserve ng slot kay Ma'am Tanya nyo. Just message her on our Facebook page. At again, G, any tips with the students when it comes to vocabulary before I start discussing vocabulary? Well, uh, hi everyone to the 175 uh, FB viewers right now and to the 95 Zoom participants. So this is your sister, Dragon. This is your Ate Genji. So uh, tips for vocabulary. Well, um, in order for you to get a, a uh, not just a better score, but a score that is way higher than the 7 or 7.5, you should use academic words, okay? But then I would, uh, this is always what I tell my coaches. Whenever you use academic words, it should 
feed the topic, it should, uh, kung sa Tagalog pa, suwak na suwak, okay? Sa topic, sa tema ng pinag-uusapan or tinatanong sa inyo. Be because uh, if you're going to use academic words incorrectly, then that will not give you points, but that would somehow lessen or uh, deduct your points from your uh, from the band score that you will be getting. So, uh I've used um, not so many academic words during the examination, but I made, I made it a point that whenever I would be using academic words, it is somehow unique and somehow not the usual um, academic words that others are using. I've, I have um, uh, a research academic words that I usually use, and this are, um, sometimes I would use fruition, sometimes uh, foliage, and then, uh, and so other, uh, and so many other academic words, okay? So I'm giving back the floor now to uh, Mother D. I'm on mute pala. Thank you so much, Ate Genji. Yeah, that's actually true, guys, okay? Um, academic words or vocabulary, guys, it's not enough for you just to know them, okay? It's not enough for you just to know them, okay? It's not actually something that you're just going to memorize, okay? You're not just you're just going to memorize, okay? Or you're just going to, uh, what do you call this, try to incorporate them on your exam. You have to use them naturally on the test, okay? So let's talk about vocabulary for IELTS, okay? So guys, first things first. Why should you use uncommon vocabulary on the exam? So first things first, the use of uncommon vocabulary is required for lexical resources band 7.5 and above, okay? If you are a person who is aiming to get like, let's say 7.5, uh, Anniversaya, Loris, okay? Our, our promo code is Anniversaya. It's applicable for NCLEX review. Actually, guys, the NCLEX review has a free IELTS review. <laughs> if you avail the NCLEX review, the IELTS review is for free. Okay, so go and message, uh, go and message Mom Tanya right now. Okay, so <clears throat> when you say anniversary, uh, anniversary, <laughs> when you say about 7.5 and above on the exam, guys, you are expected to use uncommon vocabulary. Okay, it is required for you to use that. Okay, what else? This may show your adroitness and control of the English language. When you say adroitness, is that you can use and control the English language naturally by using these words. What else? Uncommon vocabulary will help you to get a 7.0 on the speaking examination swimmingly. I have hundreds and thousands of students who can stand proof that when they started using academic words, their score significantly improved on the exam. Okay, so what else? They separate the advanced from the basic speakers, okay? When you say basic speakers, is that you're just speaking just because you want to. Okay, academic words, guys, are different from highfalutin words, okay? All right, so warning, 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 warning. Okay, do not use highfalutin words on the exam, okay? Do not use highfalutin words on the exam. Wait, my comment. Sana ma-extend sa sweldo day ang anniversary promo. Sabi ni Serenity, magpa-reserve ka ng slot kay Ma'am Tanya, anak. Mabait naman yon. Pa-reserve mo sa kanya. <laughs> okay. So, do not use highfalutin words on the exam, guys. Believe me, highfalutin words will destroy your points on the exam, okay? Academic words are different as compared to highfalutin words. Because some people, they think <clears throat> academic words are the same as highfalutin. No, they're not, okay? So, they do not have formal context and will make your sentences unclear. Apart from that, highfalutin words are informal okay they are informal sir what are the examples of highfalutin okay look at this one humdinger <laughs> skedaddle shanda freud i mean i don't even know how to pronounce that one right shanda freud or skanda freud i don't know okay those are examples of highfalutin words okay sir what are what are what are what are what do you call this? What are examples of academic words? Later on, I'll show you a lot. I made a list for you, my children. Don't you worry, okay? All right. So, guys, please try to avoid highfalutin words on the exam. And if you found the word that is interesting to you, 
cross check it first okay you have to cross check it if it is highfalutin or if it's academic okay and make sure you know how to use them all right you must never use these words because there is a colossal difference okay between highfalutin words and advanced academic words okay so use academic words naturally do not force them in your sentences okay i'll give you an example later on of a forced academic word it doesn't sound good believe me okay so first things first <clears throat> okay another wording guys is make sure you know the meaning and usage first of the word before you try to use it on the exam what else? You may download helpful dictionaries to cross-check the meaning and the natural usage of the words, okay? You may download Merriam-Webster, Oxford, and Cambridge Dictionary. Sir, how did you pronounce that? Merriam. <laughs> it's Merriam, not Merriam, okay? Merriam-Webster. Okay, you may download Merriam-Webster, Oxford, or Cambridge Dictionary. These are my three trusted dictionaries, okay? Choose your favorites and then use them every day until your test. So as to ensure that you can utilize them in context. This is what actually I tell my students, okay? I'll give you a tip. Okay, listen carefully. Tip, tip, tip. Sir, how can I use them naturally on the exam? Well, basically, choose your favorites, okay? Um, for my students, I tell them to choose a minimum of 12 academic words, which are their favorites, okay? And then you're going to write it on a piece of paper, Right, write the 12 academic words, which are your favorites. And then if you have a study table, paste it on your wall. Okay, paste it on your wall. And then every time that you're practicing, every time that you are at coaching, okay, you, you, take, you take advantage of your coaching sessions, believe me. Okay, every time that you are coaching, you look at your academic words and then you try to incorporate it. Believe me, on the exam, you don't even have to think of a word anymore because that will come to you naturally that's a good tip you know i also have students who write them in cartolina who can write who writes them in manila paper yeah yeah i have had students like that before they have like a manila paper on their wall and then it's written there their academic word and the meaning is written there you can do that all right all right <clears throat> okay lang po ba advanced enrollment then next year target po to exam for OET. Yes, Jay. Yes. No, you the uh, some students they tend to do that. They will they will do an advanced enrollment and then they're going to um use it for let's say for later on. Just message our Facebook page, Anak. Okay. All right, next one. Okay, look at the unnatural way. Me, I do that. See, there you go, Maristella Katigbak. That's that's effective. Okay, look at the unnatural way of using academic words. Listen carefully, okay. <clears throat> The students displayed tenacity on their IELTS preparation to amass their aim of passing the test. Again, look at the unnatural way to use them, okay? The students displayed tenacity on the IELTS preparation to amass their aim of passing the test. As you, can, as you may have noticed, it sounds forced. Right? It's not a part of the sentence. It's just placed there. Okay? Look at the natural way to use it. <clears throat> the students displayed tenacity on their IELTS preparation to amass their aim of passing the test. Again, the students displayed tenacity on their IELTS preparation to amass their aim of passing the test. There you go. Right? So make sure that you're not pausing before you state the academic word because it makes you think like as if you're thinking. Okay? As you might have observed on the second one, the words blended naturally in the sentence and structure and they are not forced. Okay? All right. So, all right. Let's take a look at some academic words that you may use. Okay? First things first, litigious. Litigious, likely to cause disagreement or argument, prone to arguments or lawsuit. Okay, that's litigious, right? Okay, what else? Quasi. When you say quasi, it's having some resemblance by possessing some attributes, right? Well, the way that she acts is quasi to her brother. Okay, so she has attri the attributes of her brother, gal, gal. Boldness coupled with assurance, right? So I need to show gal with my IELTS preparation. There you go. Gal, not gal bladder. Okay. <laughs> or gal gado. All right. And I thought, I'm still 
am in awe of your voice, Mama. Di- oh, God, thank you so much. Yes, Anli din yung NCLEX, anak. And, okay, so what else? Frivolous. Frivolous. Of little weight of importance. Not so important, right? Well, the way that the, the things that the person suggested is quite frivolous. It means that it's not so important, okay? What else? Tenacity. Tenacity. It's persistent in maintaining or seeking something valued or desired. I need to show my tenacity for the IELTS examination. Okay, what else? Amiable. Amiable is showing warmth or friendliness, okay? Amiable, showing warmth and friendliness. There you go. So I love talking to her because she is quite amiable. It means that she is a friendly person and she's also showing her warmth when you're talking to her, right? I have a friend. Her name is, uh, I have a friend. His name is, uh, his name is Bruno. And he is quite amiable. There you go. Okay. Furtive. Try to grasp what's the meaning of furtive. Furtive. The meaning of furtive is secret. <laughs> Sir, ano nga ang ibig sabihin ng furtive? Secret nga. That's the meaning of furtive. Furtive means it's a secret. Okay? So, itry nyo yan, ha? You tried that. Okay, you tried that. Furtive. There you go. Okay, what else? <clears throat> diligent. Okay? When you say diligent, it's showing perseverance in detail. Sir, again, how did you pronounce that? Perseverance. Perseverance. Sir, some people tend to pronounce it as perseverance. It's totally fine for you to pronounce perseverance, but the most accurate pronunciation of that one is perseverance. Okay? What else? <clears throat> impeccable. When you say impeccable is you are without fault, or error, right? I did love, I loved her impeccable performance on the IELTS exam. Indolent, indolent is disinclined to work. You're quite lazy. You're like a bludger, okay? You don't want to work. You don't want to study. You don't want to do anything. You are indolent, okay? Marginalized is belonging to the poorer sector of the community, okay? When you say poorer sector of the community, it's the poorer area, okay? Poorer society, okay? That's the meaning of marginalized, okay? There are a lot of marginalized people in the Philippines, okay? What else? Inept. Inept. Inept yung kapag ka natatagalan ka na, tapos wala ka nang magawa, inept na inept ka. <laughs> ah! Gising! <laughs> No, when you say inept, is basically it's generally incompetent, right? Quite incompetent. That's the meaning of the word inept, okay? What else? Coerce. Coerce is to force to do something by pressuring, okay? My friends are coercing me to take the IELTS exam. It means that they're pressuring you to take the IELTS exam. That's the meaning of the word coerce, okay? What else? Insatiable. Insatiable is it's impossible to gratify, right? You have this insatiable thirst for, in, insatiable thirst for, uh, what do you call this? For 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 knowledge or for, for passing the examination. Nakakawala ng inept yung pakikipagawa. <laughs> Good sentence. <laughs> How about adept? Adept is like a do- uh, adept dior anak is like a joint. Okay, adept. You show your adeptness. It means that you are versed with that particular thing. You specialize on that thing. That's adept. Okay, nakakawala ng inept, di ba? Expertise. There you go. All right. <clears throat> what else? Sedulous. Sedulous. Ito yung pinunit noong araw. Diba? Sabay-sabay tayong punitin ang ating sedulos. <laughs> Sir Joseph, sedula yon. <laughs> When you say sedulos, is that you're accomplishing something with careful perseverance, okay? You are quite careful with doing it, okay? Let's say I was quite sedulous with my IELTS preparation. There you go. Right, what else? Intrepid. Intrepid, okay? When you say intrepid, is you're invulnerable to fear or intimidation. Basically, you have an intrepid approach. Like people try to intimidate you, people try to scare you, people try to, what do you call this? People try to put you down, but you are intrepid, right? You're you're wapakels to them, right? Wapakels, that's the... (laughs) 
That's the meaning of intrepid. Wapakels. Okay? Basically, you, you are not easily intimidated. Okay? What else? Squander. Squander is to, expand, to spend extravagantly or foolishly. You love squandering on things. Like, let's say, I squandered yesterday because I bought the new iPhone. There you go. So, squander. Okay? What else? Veracity. Veracity is accurate conformity with truths and facts, okay? When you say veracity, it is truthful, okay? Veracity, okay? What else? Quaint. Quaint is strikingly old-fashioned. They're very much old-fashioned. Let's say, my grandparents are quaint, okay? When you say they are quaint, it means that they are, uh, what do you call this, old-fashioned. Nagising po ako, sabi ni Sir, impoverished. Yes, well, you may say impoverished for to replace marginalized God free my love. Okay, what else? <clears throat> sweltering, right? Sweltering is it's oppressively hot or warm. Napakainit, no? Sweltering, okay? So gamitin mo yung kapag ka nakita kita kayo ng mga kaibigan nyo, di ba? Oh my gosh, girl, sorry I'm late. Uh, it's sweltering sa labas. Sabihin sa'yo ng kaibigan mo, sira ulo ba to? Nababaliw na ba to? <laughs> sweltering, okay? It's oppressively hot or warm. It's sweltering, okay? Next one, somber. Somber is Regine Velasquez. She is Asia's somber. <laughs> somber yon, Sir Joseph. Hindi somber. Raulo ka. <laughs> Please welcome the Asia somber. <laughs> Kinaya niyo yon. Diba? Pati nanay ko natawa mama di sabi ni Kat. Hi, ma! <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Somber, guys, means it's dark or gloomy. Diba? It's shaded, no? Yung medyo makulimlim. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng somber. <laughs> Pati asawa ka. Hi, daddy! <laughs> Diba? Oh, matatandaan nyo na naman yan, di ba? Si Somber, Asia Somber, Miss Regine Velasquez. Okay. Nawala ang toko, Mama Didi, di ba? Alam nyo, para akong energy drink eh. Pag ako nagturo, gising ka talaga. Sabu ka mo matulog. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> somber, guys, makulimlim. Okay? I went out yesterday, but then again, uh, it's quite somber. Right? So when you say somber, medyo makulimlim. Okay? What else? <laughs> All right. Now, these are some of the words that you can use to replace words which are used oftenly on the exam, okay? Because sometimes we tend to say very good and very bad too much on the exam, so you may use these words right here, okay? Number one, <clears throat> another Mama D vocabs. <laughs> okay. Mama D, oh, diba? Okay, what else? Um, very good, okay? To replace the word very good, okay? Hindi yung very good ka ng very good sa exam, di ba? Oh, very good. Painom, painom po ng energy drink yung Mama D. Yung energy drink ko, anak, ay ano? Um, eh, uh, anong tawag doon? Um, extra juice. Tawag dito, extra juice o kaya cobra na merong bayawak essence. <laughs> o kaya katas ng fairy essentials. <laughs> Okay. Inaantok na nga pero nagising ako sabi ni Ate Zen. Hi Ate Zen, nanonood ka pala. <laughs> okay. Uh, from Anna May. Mama D, can we use sweltering to describe a person? Unfortunately, anak, no. Because sweltering is to describe uh, what they call this, the, 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 the thing that you're feeling with the weather. Okay? All right. So, instead of saying very good, okay? Very good, you say commendable. Notable. I love notable. Especially the big notable. <laughs> Agreeable. Okay. What else? Transcendent. Sublime. Right? Sublime. Favorable. Exceptional. Diba? Hoy, ano yan? Notable. <laughs> sublime. You know what sublime is? Yung pag di mo nagawa, sumablime ka. <laughs> <laughs> ang bilis so. ang bilis ni Sir Manuel sa notable diba sublime guys yun yung pag di mo nagawa diba ay sublime <laughs> ay sublime ba yun 
Okay, so when you say sublime, guys, it's something that is quite very good. Okay, I love her skills because she is sublime. There you go. When you try, when you are trying to say very bad, on the other hand, okay, instead of saying very bad, you can say atrocious, dreadful, dreadful, heinous. Okay, erroneous, appealing, rancid, or abhorrent. There you go. So instead of saying very bad person, you can say um, she, he is an abhorrent person. Instead of saying I have a very bad feeling, I have an atrocious sense. There you go. Atrocious sense. Wow, so shall. Okay. <clears throat> so what else? Instead of saying at all, ito na, advantage and disadvantage. You tend to say this a lot on the examination, okay? So advantage. Instead of saying advantage, you can say boon, merit, meritorious aspect, edge, ascent, uh, asset, prudence, gain. There you go. Again, I like it. Notable. Sabi ni May Lucy Grant. <laughs> Love your live, lively and exceptional from China. Hello, love joy. Hello, hello from China. Ni hao ma. Wu de ming si shi yang se fu. Wen ying lai dao elite intellect nine. Charing. <laughs> okay. So, ala, mama, di maro nukurin bag in check. Hindi joke lang yun. Di ko alam ko ni sinabi ko eh. All right. Okay, so advantage, guys. Okay, instead of saying advantage, you can say boon, merit, meritorious aspect, edge. Asset, prudence, gain. There you go. Okay, what else? <clears throat> disadvantage. Instead of saying it's a disadvantage, you can say it's a detriment, bane, liability, incommodity, strike, the adversarial side or the disadvantages side. Okay, what else? And of course, reprobation. Reprobation. Okay. Hi, sir. Hello, Rika. Rika Aditya Aditya and. And uh, Rika, <laughs> hirap na may pronounce ng last name mo, anak. Okay. So yeah, look at that. You may use these to replace advantage and disadvantage. All right? What else? A lot. When people tend to say a lot too much on the exam, you may replace the word a lot with a gamut of. Di ba? A gamut of, yan yung tramadol, paracetamol, antibiotic, cup syrup, lahat yan ay gamut. <laughs> Wale! Ayoko na! <laughs> Niusep! Di ba? Gamut yan. It's a gamut of. Di ba? A gamut of love. <laughs> okay, next one. <laughs> A plethora of or a plethora of. <laughs> Ayaw ko na. Ayos, mama ni. Sa so, ganyan ka ba araw-araw sa klase? Ay, hindi lang ganyan. Nagtotrowback pa kami ng mga estudyante ko lagi. Di ba yung mga mik-mik? Ganyan. <laughs> okay, what else? Who? Hello from UAE. Hello, Kathleen de la Pena. Okay, instead of saying a gamut of, instead of saying a lot, you can say a gamut of, a plethora of, a profusion of, innumerable, a passel of, manifold, a spectrum of. There you go. Okay, instead of saying important, okay, some people say it's important for people to do that. It's important for the government to do that. It's important for things to happen. It's important for this, for that. Instead of saying that, okay, you can replace the word important with, number one, germane, imperative, salient, prime. Okay, esteemed, guys. Yung esteemed, kung hindi man yan vegetable, siguro fish yan. Di ba? O kaya chicken. Pwede siyang esteemed vegetables, esteemed fish, esteemed chicken. <laughs> Ayoko na. Tama na. Ay. Okay. So, yeah, pertinent. There you go. You can say that too. All right, esteemed, guys. You're only going to be using esteemed to describe a person or an action, okay? Esteemed guests, di ba? Sir, is crucial, can be a synonym. Yes, crucial is also is also a synonym, anak. Kaya mo yan, mama. <laughs> Hindi ko na kaya. Bakit ba ganun? Bumalik lang si Sir Manuel, baliw na naman ako. <laughs> okay, what else? Vital, right? Or 
critical, okay? So instead of saying those words, guys, that are usually utilized on the exam, you may replace them with these, okay? Indispensable. Yeah, you can use indispensable too. Kaya lang indispensable could be used for a technique or an item usually, no? Indispensable tool. There you go. <laughs> Nanuluka na naman ako. Diyos ko, mga anak. Can we use mandatory instead of important? Um, girly, when you say mandatory, the direct um, what do you call this? The prerequisite, the direct meaning of this one is, uh, let's say, required. Okay, required. So it doesn't fall on the context. So be careful with that, Anak. Thank you so much for asking, girly. Okay, mandatory, diva. Right? How about paramount importance? Paramount, guys. I do not use paramount anymore because paramount could be a fee. Paramount could sometimes make your sentences quite unclear. Okay. Paramount kasi yan yung binababaan sa North Edsa. Pag malapit ka na, di ba yung bus? Sabi sa'yo, oh, Paramount, Paramount, Paramount. <laughs> tantamount is equal. Okay, equivalent to. Okay, tantamount is equivalent to. When you say equivalent to, parang magkapantay, that's the meaning of tantamount to your, okay? Alright, be careful with that. Okay, tremendous. Pwede, tremendous. Okay. Tremendous is a lot, okay? Now you can use that too. There are tremendous things that people can do, but they just make sure that it falls under the context, okay? One thing's for sure, guys, is that when you are trying to um, look at words on the exam, I love the effort. I actually love your effort because you guys are quite inquisitive when it comes to the words, and that's a good thing, okay? That's a good thing for you to it too to improve when it comes to your vocabulary. So don't limit yourselves to these, okay? Go to your dictionaries, find words later on, make a list, okay, that are quite unique, all right? And then use them on your exam, okay? Use them every day until your examination. Crucial is also good. Thank you so much, Dana Kayabiab. Okay. <clears throat> all right, guys. So the most important technique of all for tonight is blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. This is from the book of James chapter one to uh, chapter one, verse 12. Okay, so guys, one thing's for sure is that if you feel, um, if you have a lot of trials right now, actually I have had this realization this week is that sometimes, yes, we do have days or weeks with which we are tried so much with our faith. One thing that you can do is to never give up. Okay, keep on standing towards the test. Okay, fight back because at the end of the day, you have the Lord. Okay, you have the Lord for you to receive the crown of life. Okay, before my announcement for next week, okay, let me just pray for the people who have attended our lecture for tonight. Okay, Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity for us to spread your words to the students of the of, of of to the students who are studying for their IELTS examination. Father, teach them how to trust in you more and teach them how to persevere more towards their goals. Lord, I thank the admins of IFNG, everyone, Father, who are working with IFNG because, Lord God, this platform is helping a lot of students. Father, thank you so much for the students you have guided towards the path of elite intellect. Mind is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys. So, next week po... <clears throat> Next week, next week, next week, Friday, 9 p.m. PHT, I will be teaching you naman, guys, about the techniques for your speaking part one and speaking part two, okay? If, imagine, if Sir Joseph is going to do the speaking part one and speaking part two, how will he do it, okay? So I will be teaching you guys next week, 9 p.m. PHT. This verse is timely, mother. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Jerlyn, Jer okay? So guys, yeah, for those of you who would want to avail of our anniversary promo for Elite Intellect for the IELTS, OET, NCLEX, or CBT, just message our Facebook page, okay? And tell Mom Tanya that you're interested. Our promo code is anniversary. Okay, I love this one. Let the Spirit of God on each one of you. God bless you more, Joseph. Thank you so much, Atisen. I miss you. I'll see you very soon there in Ordaneta. Okay, guys, so before I return the floor to Sir Manuel, okay, in behalf of the staff of Elite Intellect 9, thank you so much for another fun lecture, okay, and I will be seeing you next Friday, 9 p.m. PHT, for your part one and part two speaking techniques. This is your Mama Dragon sending my love to you from the Philippines. See you guys next week. Same time, same place, 9 p.m. live here at IFNG. Back to you, Sir Manuel! Anak, nakamute ka yata. I love the energy.
Yes, I don't know. <laughs> At mo yan. Yes. Thank you so much, people from Elite. We love you guys so much. You know that. All right. Yeah. And to our student, to your students who attended and our members, thank you so much. This video or live stream will not be available to us if without without the without the support of you guys. So please, hashtag Mama D cares. <laughs> please yes. please those things. Okay. See you again next week. Ay, See you miss guys. Ka. <laughs> I miss you Bye. so much. Mama. Hello, Vito. Love ya. Bye. Mwah. Wow. Wow.